to linger on the the trade-offs, the complicated trade-offs with all of this. Uh, what's your take on work-life balance in a, in a in a company that's trying to do big things? I think that you have to have some very, very strict boundaries. But otherwise, I think balance is kind of dumb. It will make you limited. I think you need to immerse yourself in the problem. But you need to define that immersion with boundaries. So if you, you know, if you ask me, like, you know, what does like my process look like? It's monotonous and regimented, but it's all the time, except when it's not. And that's also monotonous and regimented. <laughs> um, and I think that makes me very good at my craft because it gives me what I need to stay connected to the problem without feeling resentful about the problem. Which part, the monotonous all-in nature of it, or the, the when you say hard boundaries, essentially go, go all out until you stop and you don't stop often. I'm in a little bit of a quandary right now because I'm trying to redefine my goals. And you're catching me in a moment where I have, even in these last few years of evolution, I think I've made some good progress, but in one very specific way, I'm still very reptilian. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to let go. Which way is that exactly? If you can- You know, uh, in my business, it really gets reduced to what is your annual rate of compounding? That's my demarcation. You know, Steph Curry and LeBron James, Michael Jordan, it's how many points did you average? Not just in a season, but over your career, you know, and, and in their case, to really be the greatest of all time, it's points, rebounds, assists, steals. There's all kinds of measures to be, you know, in that pantheon of being really, really good at your craft. Um, and in my business, it, it's very reductive. It's how well have you compounded? And if you look at all the heroes that I have put on a pedestal in my mind, um, they've compounded, you know, at above 30% for a very long time, as have I. But now I feel like I really need to let go because I think I know how to do the basics of my job. And if I had to summarize like an investing challenge or investing, I think really it's, you know, when you first start out investing, you're a momentum person. You saw it in GameStop, just a bunch of people aping each other. And then it goes from momentum to you start to think about cash flows, you know, how much profit is this person going to make, whatever. So that's like the evolution, you know, this is the this is the basic thing to this is a reasonably sophisticated way. Then a much smaller group of people think about it in terms of macro geopolitics. But then a very finite few crack the special code, which is there's a philosophy. And it's the philosophy that creates the system. And I'm scratching at that furiously, but I cannot break through. And I haven't broken through. And I know that in order to break through, I got to let go. So this is the journey that I'm in as in my, in my professional life. So it is an all-consuming thing, but I'm always home for dinner. You know, we have very prescribed moments where we take vacation. The weekends, you know, like if, if I, I can tell you about my week, if you're curious, but it's like- I would love, I would love to know your week. It's since it's regimented and monoton uh, uh, monotonous. I woke up, I wake up at 6.45, um, get the kids, go downstairs. We all have some form of, you know, not super healthy breakfast. I make a latte, I've become, and, and, and the latte is like, I have a machine, I measure the beans, you know, I make sure that the timer is such where I have to pull it for a certain specific ratio, you know, just so you know, 20 grams, I got to pull 30 grams with the water and I got, you know, I got to do it in 30 seconds, et cetera. So you're a coffee snob. It helps me stay in rhythm. Sure. Um, before but I used to have another machine, I just pushed a button, Yeah. but then I would push the button religiously in the exact same way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, can I say actually yeah. on, uh, on that topic, you know, the morning with kids can be a pretty stressful thing. Are you able to find sort of happiness? Is that also that That's morning great. is a source of happiness? It's, it's great. My kids are lovely. They're maniacs. 
Um, I just see, you know, and may, maybe I don't, I've never asked Freeberg this, but I'll just put my words. I see all of the things in moments where there was no compassion given to me. And so I just give him a ton of love and compassion. I have an infinite patience for my children, not for other kids. Yes, of course. <laughs> but for my kids. So anyway, so we have a breakfast thing. Um, and then I go upstairs um, and I go, I change and I, and I work out from eight to nine. And that's like the first 15 minutes I walk up on a steep incline, you know, uh, 12 to 14%, you know, three and a half to four miles per hour walk. And then, you know, Monday's a push day, Tuesday's front of the legs, Wednesday's pull, Thursday's back of the legs, um, eight to nine. Monday, I always start, I talk to my therapist from nine to 10. So as soon as I finish working out, I get on the phone and I talk to him. And it helps me lock in for the, for the, for the week. And I, and I, and I'm just talking about the past. Um, and it's just helping me. The recent past? Usually, just... it's sometimes the recent past, but usually it's about the past past. Something that I remember when I was a kid. Because that's the work about just loosening those knots, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I put in that hour of work, um, respect that hour. Then I'm in the office. And then it's like, you know, I go until 12, 15, 12, 30, go home, have lunch. Like a proper, like, go home, sit down, have lunch with Nat, talk. She leaves her work. And we talk, how are we doing? You know, just check in. Our youngest daughter will be there because she's one. And she's making a mess. And then I, I'll have another coffee. That's it. My my limit for the day. Oh, no more caffeine. That's it. Oh. And then uh, I go back to the office and I'll be there till six, seven sometimes. And I do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm allowed to have meetings. Wednesday, nothing. It's all reading. Must be. Unless it's a complete emergency. It has to be... Uh, kind of a full reading, and reading is a bunch of blogs, uh, YouTube videos. So um, no, try not to do any talking. No talking. It's like being in silence, being present, thinking about things. Are you, by the way, how do you take notes? Do you have a, a sketch? I have a pad, and I write stuff down. Sometimes I go to my phone. I'm a little all over the place. Sometimes I do Google Docs. I don't have it. This is one thing I need to get better at, actually. But typically what happens is, I actually do a lot of thinking in my mind and I'm sort of filing a lot of stuff away mm -hmm. and then it all spills out and then I have to write. Yeah. And then that gives me a body of work that I can evaluate and think about. And then I usually put it away. Um, and a lot of the time it goes nowhere, but every now and then I come back to it and it just unlocks two or three things and I have a sense of how else I'm thinking about things. Um, and then Friday at the end of the day, uh, Nat and I talked to a couples therapist um, and that's about checking out properly. So it's like, okay, now it's like focusing. The weekend is family, being present, being aware, you know, and if there's email, obviously, if I have to do meetings from time to time, no problem. Um, but there's boundaries. Checking out properly. Um, oh man, that is so powerful. Just like yeah. officially transitioning. Yeah. So th th these are these are really important boundaries so that I can be immersed. And what what that means is like look on a Saturday afternoon, you know, on a random day, she'll be like where's Chamath? And I'll be up in my room and I've found a podcast talking about like um uh desis, which is like ductal cancer in mm -hmm. situ because I've been fascinated about mm -hmm. breast cancer surgeries for a while and uh learning about that. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm um, listening to podcasts about desis. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what's that? And we're like, you know, ductal cancer in situ. She's like, okay. And so, you know, I, so I have time to continue to just constantly mm -hmm. learning, learning, putting stuff in my memory banks to organize into something. And that's like a, that's a week. But then in these fixed moments of time, phone down, everything down, we go on vacation, you know, we go on a boat, we go to whatever, where it's just us and the kids. Is there a structure when you're at work, is there a structure to your day in terms of meetings, in terms of Southside of Wednesday, 
you know, because you're- Have you're, to keep meetings to less than 30 minutes. Have to. And, you know, oftentimes meetings can be as short as like 10 or 15 minutes because then I'm just like, okay. Because I'm trying to reinforce that it's very rare that we all have something really important to say. And so the ritual that is becomes really valuable to get scale is not the ritual of meetings, but the ritual of respecting the collective time of the unit. Yeah. And so it's like, you know what, folks, I'm gonna assume that you guys are also tackling really important projects. You also wanna have good boundaries in this immersion, go back to your kids and have dinner with them every night. It's not just for me, it's for you. So how about this? Why don't you go and do your work? This meeting didn't need to be 30 minutes, it could be five. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time is yours. And and it's weird because when people join that system at Social Capital, they just, it's like FaceTime and it's like, let me make sure and let me talk a lot. It's like, I can't say anything. I respect the person that says nothing for two years and the first thing that they say is non-obvious. That person is immensely more valuable than the person that tries to talk all the time. 